After I published my blood effects tutorial, a few of you asked me how I painted the blood reaver that I featured in that video. And so I'll be doing just that in this guide. I'll be applying this muted color palette technique to Grashrax Ravagers from Warhammer's Beast Grave. And even though I use an airbrush for these particular models, I will also be showing you a brush alternative using a Stormcaster turn on. So let's get started. The first step in painting is to prime so the later layers of paint properly stick to the surface of the model, but it's also a great opportunity to create all of the deepest, darker shadows that our miniature will feature. Therefore, I've used a black primer for this step and have primed all of my miniatures fully assembled. The type of primer you, I'm using here is from an airbrush, but it really doesn't matter as long as it's black. The first step after priming is to create those highlights and shadows, essentially building a grayscale version of our final miniature, ready for us to add color to later on. As I mentioned before, I'll be showing you how to create this black and white result using both an airbrush and regular brushwork. I'll be starting with an airbrush, but I'll include a timestamp on screen that you can skip to for the Stormcast. Through our airbrush, we'll be applying three layers of progressively lighter grays, which will result in a transition from the black in the recesses to an almost white at the upper and more pronounced edges. If you're using an airbrush, you will need to begin by thinning your paint. I do this by using a brush to move some paint from my pot and then steadily mix in a little airbrush thinner until the resulting mixture has a milky consistency. When you spray this mixture, you want something that is not too thick to cause speckling or too thin to create watery film over your model surface. The first paint I'll be using is Mechanica Standard Grey, and this will be applied by holding the airbrush directly above the miniature. We're essentially mimicking a light source with our airbrush here, so I find it helpful to imagine a figure standing beneath a bright spotlight. The upper areas, like the head, shoulders and arms, will be much lighter, more defined, because of the light source, whereas the lower areas of the, and those covered by other parts of the body will appear more shaded and less defined. Spraying this grey paint from above mimics how the light would fall on a model. As this is our first layer, we can afford to cover a larger proportion of the model. We can spray from further away and in a wider arc than we can do in later steps. Once this first step is completed, the result should be a model that is lighter when viewed from above than it is when viewed from below. Next, I'll be using Dawnstone, and for the most part, an identical technique as before. Spray from above the model like we did last time, but spray a little closer to the model and in more focused bursts. Use the areas that were painted grey in the previous step as your guide as to what areas need to be hit with this lighter paint, but make sure you don't completely cover the Mechanica Standard Grey as we want to maintain those dark to light transitions. Finally, we have a layer of Administratum Grey to apply, the lighters of the paints that will be airbrushing. Like before, spray from above and make the application much more focused to key areas like the head, face and across the shoulders, and also over any weapons held aloft. Keep the application light as we don't want the miniature to become too bright and impact on our muted colour scheme. Now, if you're looking to create this result with a regular brush, then dry brushing is your friend here. It's far quicker than painstakingly building up thin layers of paint or creating transitions with wet blending. It also gives us a way of mimicking directional lighting to a degree. Dry brushing involves loading up a fairly large brush with some paint, Mechanica Standard Grey in this case, and removing some of the excess onto a tissue or a piece of paper until only a small amount of paint remains in the bristles. With your brush, you then want to apply some downward motions, starting at the top of your model and moving towards the bottom. Holding your model at a slight angle to your brush will help to build up the paint on the more upper parts of the model first, mimicking a light source to some degree. One thing I like to do while dry brushing is to keep my brush ever so slightly damp as it helps to avoid that dusty texture that can often form. Even though the technique is called dry brushing, having a small amount of moisture in your bristles will give you better results. Using the same dry brushing technique as before, apply some of the lighter Dawnstone. However, this time focus your application mainly around the upper parts of the model rather than across the whole model. This should result in a mostly grey model when viewed from the top and a mostly black model when it's viewed from beneath. Finally, we want to apply some administratum grey, but this time we want to focus on the key areas like the head and the face and across the shoulders and over any weapons held aloft, much like we did with the airbrushing. Now this will really emphasize these areas as well as finishing off that light source effect. So here we have the results of our airbrush compared to our dry brush. It's clear from the comparison that the airbrush provided much smoother blending and better control, 
but it does require a much more expensive setup than our dry brush model did. So really, it's all about what you have available to you. I should note, however, that a similar effect could be achieved with aerosol spray paint. You could start with a black miniature, spray from above with Mechanica's standard grey, followed by a light dusting of grey sear from the same direction. This will result in a brighter overall shade and gives you less fine control than either airbrushing or dry brushing, but is a quick and relatively inexpensive method. With the transitions completed, we now want to start work on emphasizing key details of our miniatures, and the best way to do this is with some edge highlights. This is where you drag the edge of your brush along an edge using a lighter paint. This will emphasize that edge and help to improve how your details stand out. The first paint I'm using here is Administratum Grey once again, and this time I'm focusing it along all of the upper edges. Again, we're following the same light source principle from above and giving the edges of the panels facing the light source a lighter layer of paint. I should note that all of these highlights can be used on both methods of transitions as well, be it uh, aerosol, airbrush, or dry brushing. The final highlight is to use Ulth 1 Grey, but this time we'll be using it on areas that were mostly covered with Administratum Grey during our earlier shading steps. It's most likely that these areas will be focused around the face and shoulders and other items that are positioned towards the top of the model. Now that we have the shading and highlights of our miniatures completed, we can now start to add some colour. The best way to do this is with glazes. These are translucent layers of paint that will allow us to add colour to our miniature whilst keeping that shading still visible beneath. I personally found that contrast paints work great as glazes. They're already translucent and their high pigmentation means that they can create rich, vibrant colours. However, out of the pot, their consistency is a little gloopy for what we need here. Fortunately, we can remedy this by mixing our contrast paint in with some Lamia Medium. I found that using equal amounts of medium to contrast paint gives us a good consistency as it will slightly reduce the strength of the colour whilst creating a more fluid paint that we can use to create an even layer of colour over our miniature. The first contrast paint that I'm using here is Dark O Flesh, and this is being applied over the fleshy areas of our beastmen. You can see that the mixture more evenly covers the surface and gives us a subtle flesh colour. To maintain our muted scheme, a single layer of paint is usually enough, but if you feel that you're lacking in colour, allow your first layer to dry before applying a second coat over the top. This mixing and application of said mixture will be repeated across the rest of the miniature using various different contrast paints, which we'll cover next. The first of these will be applied to the bones, teeth and cloth wrappings, and we'll be making use of a skeleton hoard to do so. For the fur and any other reddish brown areas, such as the inside of the mouths, I chose to use some Saigal Brown. Wildwood was then used over the wooden spear shafts, bows and leather parts of the models, as well as being used over the bases to create the appearance of mud. At this stage, many of the areas that we tackled so far used warmer colours, so I next wanted to use a colder colour to create the metal and stone. And so, I've chosen Space Wolves Grey, as this should nicely contrast against those warmer tones. Next, the horns and hooves of the Beastmen were given a coat of Black Templar. If you really wanted to emphasize the ridges on the horns, you could apply a second layer targeted directly into those recesses between the ridges. Continuing with the same principle as before, I next used some Griff Charger Grey to cover over the areas of cloth and fabric, such as the loincloths. So at this stage, we have the colors of our more subdued color scheme completed, but we need something that really stands out as a focal point for these miniatures. Using only muted colors will potentially result in a model that just looks dull and bland. Fortunately, this muted scheme will make bright colors really stand out against them. So for each model that you have, you want to pick out one key feature, preferably something small, and paint it entirely in white. For this Grashrak miniature, I've chosen to pick out the drips on his blade, as well as the inside of the various runestones hung about him. In addition to this, I've also painted on some of the freehand runes to his staff and skull hanging from his neck. With your details chosen and coated with white, you then want to add a layer of a brighter contrast paint. I've chosen Iand in yellow for this, as I want the miniatures to look as though they're channeling the amber magic of Gur. With this paint, I'm applying it directly from the pot over the areas we painted white. As you apply the paint, it should give you these parts a really bright and intense colour that will be emphasised against the duller colours surrounding them. So, once your final paint is dried, you should be left with something similar to this. As you can see, each model in my warband has a different yellow focal point unique to their miniature, 
as well as glowing yellow eyes. Now whilst I used eye end in yellow, you could pretty much use any bright colour you wished. Pretty much anything that would best suit your theme. Now for those of you that wanted to see how our earlier Stormcast miniature looked after contrast paints were applied, here is the finished result. The resultant transitions are mostly the same, but I feel that the choice to use brighter colours for my base coats here resulted in a less effective overall appearance. But still, it works as proof that the dry brushing technique of pre-shading can still be quite effective. I also want to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to every one of my Patreon supporters for helping with the costs of producing these videos. It's your continued support that allows me to make these videos in the frequency that I currently do, and I really appreciate it. If you're a fan of my videos as well and would also like to help me out, you can find a link to my Patreon page below that will allow you to donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which I would be eternally grateful for. Also, anyone looking to chat about all things Wargaming with others who also enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.